and the beginning of Amélie, yes, of course, was just a little vignette presenting the, uh, the, the world around her and her. And um, what we, we had this for, it was longer than it is now. It was about 20 minutes long. And, uh, and we felt something was wrong. And uh, we felt that after 15 minutes, something must have had happened in order to, uh, you know, wake the audience up a little bit. Because after a while, with the voiceover and these nice shots and everything, you, you get a little, not bored, but I mean, sleepy, you know, and nothing happens. It doesn't really go ahead. So, um, so we thought that we would we will create an additional scene, which was not planned, which was not written, which was not shot, and we did that with uh, with bits and pieces from other parts of the film, and that's the part when um, Amelie has been presented in the bar, and she's she's having this shot with uh, the trail. And we add, I mean, that's the beauty of the uh, voiceover because you can change it all the time and uh, add every, any information you want. It's very easy. You can tr try several things. And we said that um, at that moment in her life, she didn't know something was going to change her life. So, I mean, it's just uh, two words written on the paper. And from then, you can create a scene. And we went from that, uh, that scene, that shot of her, to the shot of, uh, of her dressed as uh, Zorro, very short, and then a, a, a just a glimpse at the, the, uh, the car accident under the bridge. It's just a few shots like this, and it's uh, with a big sound, and suddenly, oh, something is going to happen. So the interest of the audience has been highlighted. That was something added. Oh yeah, completely added. I mean, done in 10 minutes in the catalog. So it's, uh, yeah, it's always possible to change a lot of things. And but of course, this, this was easy here because because of the voiceover. You know, when you need to have an actor saying the line, then it's much more complicated. It, it implies a reshoot, and it's much more complicated. And I was thinking of something else. Yeah, and the voiceover. I was. Um, we had the voiceover written, of course, but it changes all the time. But you need the voiceover to uh, to cut because you need to, to get the rhythm of the, of the lines and, uh, and the, uh, the information. So I spend my time recording the voiceover. I recorded it on the edit directly. I plugged a, a microphone and, and recorded and re-recorded each time we changed the word. And we did all the film like this. And after six or eight months, uh, then uh, Jean-Pierre started to, to ask himself, so, okay, who's going to record the voiceover? And he started to do a casting for, for actors for recording the voiceover. And it took ages because he couldn't find anyone who was able to say the lines as fast as I was saying them. So at one point, we had uh, this terrible feeling that uh, well, my, my voice was going to stay on the film. <laughs> and I was quite happy about this because it was nice and everybody liked it, and, uh, except for Jean-Pierre because he said, uh, you know, it's just impossible for me. It's the voice of my editor. It's not, it's not a character. It's not a, an actor. It's my editor. It, it, it can't be the voice of the film. So we finally found a great actor to do it. I hate him. 